living testimony Y'all, I could have been dead and gone But Lord, you let me live on I am, I'm a living testimony And I thank the Lord, I'm still I don't know about you, but I'm glad to Somebody got a testimony. Somebody got a testimony. Somebody oh God a praise. Hey, one more chance right here. Come on. Begin to open up your mouth and begin to worship God and begin to tell him how good he is and begin to tell him how good he's nobody like you God and there's nobody like you God and there's nobody like you God and there's nobody like you God you keep on providing you keep on making a way you keep on protecting. You keep on delivering. Come on. You keep on giving. Come on, somebody. You ought to be thankful and lift up your hands and begin to worship the good God and begin to worship the great God and begin to worship the mighty God and begin to worship the awesome God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. begin to worship that God right there in your own way begin to worship him hallelujah it is good just to be here it's good just to be alive thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, yes. You may be seated in the presence of God. As I reiterate, it is just good just to be here. So many things have happened in these six months. 
Can't tell it all, but but the good thing is he spared you. He kept you covered. Because somebody kept reading Psalms 91. He covered you. Hide me in his refuge. God is so good. God is so good. God bless you this morning and God keep you. Certainly we are so excited to see the many of you who have come out to the house of God today. Certainly we miss you. I've been doing this by myself and with my wife and kids and the musicians and minister music. We've been here by ourselves, but I want you to know not by ourselves because Jesus has been in this place. This has been very, very difficult to navigate our way through, but somehow, some way, we made it. We made it. You made it. You made it. You made it. Thank you for adhering to uh, the guidelines. Thank you for being socially distanced, but thank you for just being here. I, I tell you, I was very apprehensive when administrative board and God had already spoken to me but the administrative board made the decision to reopen I was very apprehensive reluctant and on Friday the night and I always ask God to God if it's something show me a sign then I, I, I'm just kind of like getting it was let some dew be on the fleece in the morning and I said God you got to show me a sign if, if this is what you have to do because I am about the welfare of your people, the protection of your people and making sure we do the very best things we can do to make sure everybody's safe. And I was standing in the end zone on the football field, South Pike versus Macomb. I looked around and the many people that were just all cluttered together and you can't get them to do right. We, you know, we're not just going to do right until it come to church now. I, 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 got, I got whipped by God. I felt so bad because I was reluctant. And I looked around and seen all the people that was gathered there and all the people that was fussing outside the fence talking about, you don't have a ticket for me. But on Sunday morning, we scared to come to church, but we... We'll fight for a ticket to go to a football game. I, 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 got, I got convicted. And I said, God, I'm going to church Sunday morning. It makes no difference if I'm there by myself. I'm going. I'm going anyway. Let me tell you, we got more faith in the world than we have in God. At some point, we have to make up our mind. We're not kept <laughs> by the world. We are kept by the power of God. How many know that this, it is God? If God don't keep us, we won't be kept. And then when, when, when fear comes in, faith goes out. I said when fear comes in, faith goes out because fear has came into our homes. And the more we stay at home, the more fearful we get because we keep listening to what's happening on the radio, what's happening on TV looking at CNN, and the more they talk about how many cases, guess what? The more fear starts setting in. But he said, I'm God that healed you. How many know he'll keep you? Not saying that you don't have wisdom, because he'll give you wisdom on how to carry yourself and where to go and where not to go. But then at the same time, you can't be so afraid that you can't come to the house of God. Even though we're going to adhere to all the laws of the land, you can't be afraid to go to the house of God. We've been through that. We, we, we've grown, we should have grown by now. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I, I didn't come out of this thing the same way. I'm different than I was when I went in this. My faith is stronger. 
I believe the God I serve is the same God that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And I believe he's the God. Not one of them, after years and years and years, was sick and feeble. He kept them healed. Some of the little children had on the same shoes. How many know he's a miracle worker? And see, when we start believing he's a miracle worker, God will show up and he'll show out. And it leads me this morning to the book of Psalms, the 122nd Psalm, and the very first verse. I was glad. Oh, 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 my goodness. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, our feet shall stand within thy gates. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. There are set thrones of judgment throne of the house of David pray for the peace of Jerusalem they shall prosper that love thee peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces for my brethren and companion saints I will now say peace be within thee because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek that good. I want to talk about this morning. Let us go to the house of the Lord. It's, it's time. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Why, 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 Pastor Hare? Number one is every day, it's not a day that goes by that I don't see some tragic in families, some lost loved one, some hurting young man, some hurting young lady. It's not a day go by that my phone doesn't ring to say, Pastor Harry, please pray for a family member. Not a day go by that I don't hear of somebody shooting somebody in cold blood. Let us go to the house of God. Our, our feet shall stand in its courts. Let us go to the house of God. Let me tell you, you'll get comfortable at staying out of the house of God. How many know, why, why, why Pastor Harry, why, why go to the house of God? We need to go to the house of God, number one, there's joy. Somebody said there's joy in the house. I, I don't know how you came here this morning, but when you come through those doors, what we've been doing here, we've had joy. Since, since we've, been, we, we've been coming here, we had joy. Let me tell you, there is joy in the house of God. Look at verse one. David said, I was you don't need to come here moping and just because you got that mask on, you need to smile underneath that mask. And you need to lift your hands underneath the mask. Lift your hands and say, there he is. Somebody drug in here this morning, but I didn't drag in. I, I said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. I was glad when, they, when we made the decision to open the house of God. How many was glad? If you were glad, just kind of raise your hand and say, you're just glad to be here. You had to be glad to come this morning. Because somebody's scared, but yet they go to work every day. Work right along beside. Ain't no six feet difference in where they are. They, write, they go in the classroom, all those kids around them. They, they're teaching, but, but they can't come to the house of God. Ain't God all right? But I'm so glad that it make no difference where I go. I still believe if God don't keep me, 
I can't be kept. He that keepeth Israel by night need to slumber, not sleep. And when you said go to church, I, I remember when I was a little boy, I, I, my mom used to drag us to church, drag us in the house of God. Stuff, <laughs> in, a, in a little car, and all of us piling there, all 10 children in one little car. And I was dreading it. Sunday school was done. Preacher was done. Deacon sleep. And then when I got, they said, well, you coming to church? I ain't going to no dull, dry, dead, cold church. But after I got older, and when God came into my life, when I really experienced salvation and what Jesus had done for me, boy, when somebody said, it's church time, my feet couldn't be still. I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. And somebody been through something. Somebody been through this thing. Somebody had this virus. <laughs> somebody been diagnosed with it. But then when we heard the church doors would open, you said, I'm going to be the first one here. If nobody else comes, you better get on your feet and give him a praise. You better give him a 30 second praise right now and say, thank you, God. Somebody didn't go to the hospital, but you know you was coughing and sniffing and you got through it. You ain't told nobody, but you know you had something you ain't never had before. You ought to lift your hands right now and tell God thank you. I don't know about you, but I was glad. When they said, let us go into the house of God because there's joy in the house. David said it was just joy in the house. Oh, he said, oh, thy gates, oh, Jerusalem, is built as a city that's compact together. In other words, there is unity in the house of God. You gain strength. People edify one another. It is so compact together. Let me tell you, even though you're socially distanced in here, but when you come together, you can't forget to assembling yourselves together. Some people I do this good at home. That church, no, 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 baby. You keep staying at home, you're going to get weaker and weaker. We have to edify one another. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh, some men don't want to come to church and they don't want to send them and say, I have church at home. No, that's not going to work always. Yeah, we went through a season where we had to be at home. But now it's time to come together. Because I, I don't feel good when I don't see your face. Come on. You may not think it, you don't know it, but I want to tell you right now, just seeing your face this morning makes a difference in my life. Oh yeah, you are strengthening me right now by me just seeing you, just you showing up in God all right. We're so compacted together. We're knitted and twi twitted together because one spirit lifts another spirit. In the, in the, in the book of Psalm, the 133rd chapter, in the very first verse, it says, uh, uh, how, oh, how. Good it is. How joyful it is. Behold how good, how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. See, the people that share this morning, I don't believe your mind on nothing else but church. See, you, you don't have to have a whole lot of folk. No, he said, what, well, two or three are gathered in my name. I will be in the midst. And since we are in unity, we, are, we got our mind on the same thing. We got our mind with the same purpose. How I many know God is showing up? Somebody shout glory right there. That's, that's time to give him a praise. Oh, yes. In the house, there's unity. There's joy in this house. Yes, there's joy in the house because David said on our way there, we, we, we will be traveling up to Jerusalem. He said the people would be singing songs. That's why David wrote so many. On their way to the temple, they, they wrote psalms on their way. They were singing on their way there. Oh, hallelujah. How great thou art. Amazing grace. Come on, just, just songs. I've told people over and over to, to be happy on your way to church. Don't wait till you get to church to get happy. On your way here, you ought to be praising God. On your way here, Paul said, bring a song. Bring a hymn, bring a testimony, bring a prayer, bring a gift to church, bring something that will enhance the service of the Lord. Somebody shout, there's joy in the house. Not only there's joy in the house, there's praise 
in the house. Oh, in a very second verse, it says this word. In the third verse, it says this word. It, it says there's praise in the house. When we get there, we are praising God, he said. We're going to praise God. L let me tell you, the reason why I know it is because, would you remember the prodigal son? He had left the house. Luke 15, 25, he had left the house. Look at, back it up the best verse four there. It said, blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they. In that verse four, it says, blessed are they. In Psalms, he says, blessed are they that dwell in the house. They will still be praising thee. If you dwell in the house, you're going to praise God. But if you're out of the house, you don't have no reason to praise him. Because you don't know the way, you don't know the way, but you know what God has done for you because you know you're in the house. See, when you're in the house, there's a praise in you. Nobody shouldn't have to tell you to lift your hands and tell God thank you. Nobody shouldn't have to tell you that God been good to you. Nobody shouldn't have to tell you to get on your knees and pray to God. Because he said, my house in Matthew he says, my house is the house of prayer. But you made my house the den of thieves and wolves. And see, that's why God comes in and we think it's the pandemic. Sometimes God come in and say, you know what? You're not making my house the house of praise and the house of prayer. He came and he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be the house of prayer. See, we didn't, sometimes... We have forgotten how to communicate with God. Y'all listen to me very, very carefully. And see, we go through things, and guess what? God has driven us back to learn how to talk to him, learn how to communicate with him. We've been having the best prayer lines. If you hadn't been on prayer line on Wednesday night, you've been missing it. You, you need to get with, with the people that's, that has the, the, the number, and you need to be on that prayer line. We, we're not on that but 15 minutes, but you're talking about powerful. It has been a blessing to the ones that's been on there. It's been a blessing to me. It has been awesome. And I want to tell you, it, it driven us back to talking to God in ways that we hadn't been talking to him. So it, he said he came in the temple and he took a whip. He said, it is written. Y'all in here selling. See, the church has had gotten to a place to where, I'm not talking about pleasant, I'm talking about church as a whole. Church has gotten to, got, gotten to a place to where we were going through the motion. We going, we 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 we're just satisfied at how things are going. We 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 we're dressing good, we're looking good, we're driving good, but we forget about the very essential things, the things that's more important. That is a relationship with God. We, 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 we strive for position. We strive for status. We strive for doing this and doing that and raising money for this and raising money for that. But we forget about who God really is. And now he comes in the temple. He said, it is written, my house should be the house of prayer. God is driving every one of us back to a prayer life. And you hear me good today. If you never hear me no more, you hear me. God is driving all of us back to a prayer life. You have got to start communicating with God. We have forgot how to communicate. When we was in the cotton fields, when we didn't have nothing, when we, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, uh, pay, we, we had to rob Peter to pay Paul. But when we got a little bit above <laughs> the grinding stone, we start taking church for granted. I drag in, I do, but when life flashes right before your eyes, when things begin to dwindle upon you as never before, you begin to see things differently. When family members start leaving you, friends dying, come on somebody, we had taken God for granted. We've taken church for granted. Oh, I got to go listen to hair today. I'll be glad when it's over with. L let me tell you, there's one day I told you before, you're going to want to hear my voice and can't hear. You'll be in a hospital room crying. You'll want to hear one of my prayers and can't hear it. 
All you can hear is the nurses around you. L let me tell you, God is driving us back to a prayer life. He says, my house is the house of prayer. Look at your neighbor, look over at somebody and point at them and say, this is the house of prayer. Ain't God all right? Yes, not only is a house of prayer, the reason why I was glad when they said unto me, go into the house of the Lord, is because it is a house of peace and security. When you're outside of the house, you don't have no peace. Oh, oh yes, in your home, you can sit there and, and watch it on Facebook, but ain't nothing like being in church. There's nothing like being in the congregation, nothing like being around the pastor. Because he said, let, let me tell you, back in the Old Testament, the, the, the Israelites, they, they were given Aaron, who was a priest, Moses' brother, and Moses would pour oil on top of his head. The oil would run down to the hem of the priest's garment, and it flowed to the people. Let me tell you, if you're not around me, how can you get that? <laughs> That manifestation, how can you get that, uh, that impartation of the anointing of God out of my life if you're not right there? Yes, we can say, I'm not for connecting, but the woman said, if I could just touch the hem of his gum. In other words, I got to get close to him. Come on, somebody. She couldn't, she couldn't get it way back in the crowd. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, what anointing is, what, what's flowing down on him. Let me tell you, I will be made whole. There, there, there is peace and, and, and there is security in the house. See, when you get outside of the house, out of the wheel and out of the way, there is no security. Because in that verse, he says, the city there, it is surrounded. This, this, this worship place, he said, I, I, I pray for peace of Jerusalem. In this house, he said, we pray for peace. You know, some people want peace, but there is no peace outside of the house. Jesus said, without me, there is no peace. He said, when you pray, you pray for this time, but be, be, be thankful that the peace of God will just go through your heart. See, when you come to the house of God, you got to pray, but then that means that the peace of God will go through your heart. Jerusalem, they, they shall prosper that love thee. Pray for that peace that whoever loves you, God, they come into the house, they're going to prosper. How many want to prosper in here? In every area of your life, when you're in the house of God, you, you got peace and you got protection. You don't have to worry about that enemy because you're in the house. Back in that day, when Aaron was a priest, they brought in the sacrificial animals. They brought them in to be sacrificed for the people in the place of their sins so that the people didn't die. They killed the animal. And that blood was an atonement. Only Aaron could go into the Holy of Holies with that anointing and then bless the people. Had to offer some blood for his own self and then for the people. But now there is a substitute. See, the synagogue, the temple was the Holy of Holies. But now Jesus is that substitute. He, 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 he said, I'm going to make my habitation in the worship place. So now, when you come here, whatever you've done, you can give it to Jesus. Oh, Jesus is right here today. That's why you got to be in the house. And, and those of you who are here going to experience something this week. You're going to experience something this week. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible says in, in that same chapter, one, in the 133 Psalm, First through the third verse, listen to these, these words right here. The one on the third side. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And then he said, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. The anointing, since you were here today, the ointment is on my head. I've been preaching it. The ointment is on my head. It's running down. It even errands. And it went down to the hem of his garment. As I'm standing here this morning in the hem of my pants, the anointing is so heavy that you're going to be blessed. Look at verse 3. 
And it said, as the dew of Hermon. There was a mountain where the dew came down. And sometimes it's frozen and the dew didn't fall. But then the right atmosphere come. Dew would come down and be on the mountain. But it had to have the right atmosphere. See, sometimes dew fall in your yard. Sometimes you get up in the morning, no dew. Because the atmosphere has to be conducive for dew to fall. That dew, <laughs> leave it right there. Leave it. That dew is anointing. That dew is the blessing. What is a blessing? A blessing is something supernatural that <laughs> is impossible. You think that can't be done that God did in your life. I wish I had somebody. He said, the dew descended upon the mountain of Zion for that the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. God going to give you a long life. Not just this life, but life evermore. Because we need that dew. We need the dew <laughs> falling down on the mountain. We need the dew. We need an anointing coming down from me that going to give you life. You can see that devil today. This kind of virus won't take me. Ain't God all right? No, it's not going to. No, you got to speak it. You got to let the devil know it will not take me. Because he's going to give me life forevermore. Because the dew is falling. Because he's going to give you a blessing that's supernatural, that's unexplainable. That's what a blessing is. It's unexplainable. You ain't going to explain how in the world you keep going and going you're going around people, you ain't caught it. Come on, somebody. Yes, I'm going to wear my mask. Yes, I'm going to do this. But I know it is the dew from heaven that's covering me. Somebody ought to shout glory right now. Somebody said there's security in the house. Father's the son did not understand when he got outside of the house. He said, well... I don't need this. I, 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 I got my own protection. I got enough money. If I get sick, I got enough money to take care of me. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I, I, don't, I don't need you telling me what to do and to do it and how to do it. Let me have my way. Let me go where I want to go. Let me do what I want to do. You don't understand. You don't have to be in church. I see a lot of folk not in church, and they still doing all right. Is that right? And somebody has been doing all right since uh, we hadn't been coming to church. Now they feel like uh, I don't have to go to church because I, I'm doing all right. But let me tell you, one of these days, oh Lord, one of these days, it's gonna come a time when your money don't work for you no more. When your job no longer needs you. Is that all right? It's gonna come a time when the people you call in all He down in the hawk pen. He thought about the, uh, I had it made as long as I was in church. Why I was going to church, uh, I had somebody I could lean on in a time of a crisis. I had somebody that had the whole world in the palm of his hand. I had somebody that owned the cattle mm -hmm, on a thousand hills. Don't hear me. I had somebody that can turn my midnight in the day. Ain't God all right? But I decided yeah, it feel pretty good hanging out with my friends. And I can go on and, and do what they do. Oh, Lord, but uh, I found out you can't depend on friends. When my money ran out, my friends ran out. 
ain't God all right? No wonder David said, I was glad. Y'all don't hear me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Your Lord. He said they didn't send me no text message. They didn't put it on Facebook. But it was a personal invitation. They told me to my face, Oh, David, let us go to the house of the Lord. I wonder if anybody in here told somebody this week, Neighbor, let us go to the house of the Lord. Ain't God all right? But oh, Lord, because David said in Psalms 84, David said these words, Oh, Lord, how admirable are your courts. In other words, oh, it look good when I get in your house. I wish I had somebody here that know it look good this morning. If you feel all right, kind of wave your hand. If you feel all right, kind of wave both hands and say, Oh, Psalms 84 and 1. 84 and 1 says, Oh, how in my boat is the course of the Lord. Oh, in your tabernacle. Ain't God all right? Verse 2 says these words. My soul. I don't know about y'all. It's all these six months. My soul. Long it uh, Even faint it uh, To be right here with you. Ain't God all right? Every now and then. I had to pat myself on the back. And said this too shall pass. Is anybody out there said that? This too shall pass. After a while, he said, my flesh cried out for the living God. How many in your home start calling on Jesus? Did you call on him? Did you tell him, Lord, we need you, God? Whoa, God. We need your power. Did anybody call on him? If you call on him, just kind of wave your hand and say, I call on him. I call on him. But oh, he said, one day in your coach, one day in the house of God is better than a thousand years in the house of the weekend. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Somebody say, yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He said one day is better than a thousand years. He said, in your house, I'd rather, I've been in my home, shouting in my kitchen, been in my home, Praying on my couch, uh, but oh, but one day, if I can just have one day back in Pleasant Grove, if I could just have one day to walk around these aisles, if I could just have one day to lift my hand, I, I want it this position, I want it that position. But I don't need no position. He said, I'd rather be a dope keeper. I'd rather be a dope keeper than to sit at my house. Because I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad been to be in the house. If you're glad to be here, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Tell the Lord, thank you. Say, let's. Have a good time in the house of God. Oh, 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 God, all right. Oh, oh, yeah. Somebody.
got to tell God thank you right now. Tell him thank you. Lift those hands to heaven. In the Lord's house. In God's house. Aren't we glad just to be here? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, God, for your house. Sometimes we take it for granted. But just to be in God's house, how admirable it is just to be here. Lift those hands to heaven right now. Father, we thank you.